Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as as the Bard of Philbar. Welcome to session Fartook-39. Last time, our group woke up to discover Karina and Bulger had taken their surroundings for granted and had wandered off into the plains in search of food. While upsetting the group, their efforts were rewarded in the form of very large eggs which provided a good meal for the party. With one egg left over, the group continued on towards Colby but then the last egg hatched and produced a two-legged creature that has taken a shine to the youngest member of the group. No, 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 said a flustered cave silver tongue. If it is an axe beak, I don't want that thing anywhere near me. He and the ranger then got into a heated discussion about the creature's origin, while Bulger, Lady Irena, and Sister Elaine each peered in for a better look at the strange chick. The infant axe beak quickly scooted over towards Karina, who carefully placed her hands around it, cradling it. The beady eyes took in the three other adventurers with fear, then backed up to Karina's guarded glance. The mage reached out to pet the creature, who awkwardly lashed out with its large beak and nearly fell over out of the waif's protective grip. Lady Irena snapped her hand back quickly and took a step in reverse. Aye, lassie, it appears you have found a new friend remarked Bulger the sailor. The gnome reached in and the diminutive creature pecked at the gnome's worn hands, causing him to laugh at the attack. Sure, laugh now, warned Cape Silvertongue. Those things are carnivorous and can easily kill a man. The group looked at Cabe, then back to the infant bird, then back to the half-elf. Are we afraid of the widow birdie? taunted Sister Elaine, which garnered a cross look from the bard. He puffed up in anger, but the cleric put up her hand. In its present state, I don't think the creature possesses the immediate threat to us, Cabe. I don't think we need to skewer it just yet. The bard sheathed his dagger and again berated the quartet of the dangers of a fully grown axe beak when Fargus Stoutheart yelled out, We got company! The group spun around and drew weapons while Karina grabbed the tunic and threw it over the infant animal. The ranger wandered down the trail with his weapon sheathed and waved it to the, the approaching wagon. The group also sheathed their own weapons and fell in line behind the large human. The wagon, driven by a pair of oxen, slowed to a halt as another human pulled on the reins. Whoa! called out the man. Greetings! You be friend or foe? he inquired. Sister Elaine stepped up and her faith was recognized by the man who pointed. The merchant determined that the group was not a threat to him at the present time, with the female cleric being supplicant. He asked what they wanted, and Fargus pointed out that they were trying to get to Colby and weren't sure if they were on the correct path. Ah, you be a day out on foot, said the man as he pointed in the eastern direction. Continue down this road and you'll be there by midday tomorrow if the bandits don't get you. The group chimed in about the bandit threat, and the merchant pointed out that there have been a lot of complaints that the road isn't safe to travel on without guards. Karina piped up, pointing out that he had no guards, but the human chuckled and nodded. He then held aloft a staff that was streaked with scorch marks. He pointed out that he didn't need guards when he held up the Staff of Lightning. Lady Irena recognized the item and stepped back immediately, causing the old man to giggle. Don't worry, pretty elf lady. I have no quarrel with you, unless you have one with me. The maid shook her head and the man put the staff back down. He warned the group that by nightfall, they would be in the area where the bandit attacks had been reported and to be careful. Fargus thanked the man and moved off the road to let him pass when Bulger asked the man what he sold. Grabbing his staff, the man jumped off the wagon to one side. I used to sell adventuring supplies but I've made enough money. I'm going to bring him to live with my son and his wife. He threw up the canvas side of the wagon and exhibited a small inventory of items. 
The inquisitive group stepped forward to examine the wares. Do you all need anything? I'll give you a big discount so the oxen don't have to carry it all. The group looked at the variety of items, with Cabe and Sister Elaine spying a large, multicolored tent. Inquiring as to how many would fit in the tent, they were told that it could comfortably fit eight people inside. The merchant then began to talk prices with Cabe, handling the party's bidding. The initial price was quoted at 400 crowns, but the bard was able to talk the man down to 170 gold pieces. Rubbing his beard, the man confirmed that he would settle on 170 crowns just to get rid of it, pointing out that he sleeps in the wagon anyway. Cabe looked to the others, who nodded that it was a fair price. Money was exchanged from Sister Elaine while Fargus and Cabe wrestled the item off the wagon, but found the fabric surprisingly light. The ranger felt the material and asked if it was durable. The merchant, Cabe, and Irena all laughed. The mage recognized the fabric as elven made and assured the large human that it would be quite protective. As the group marveled over their new purchase, the merchant asked if there was anything else, but the group politely thanked him and replied that they were done. The merchant then noticed Karina was admiring a small leather bridle. It is a lovely item for a pony or a large dog, my dear. Are you interested in purchasing it? asked the merchant. Karina blushed and pointed out that she had neither nor did she possess any money. The merchant looked at the rustling tunic she was carried and inquired about it. The wave pulled the tunic away from the man who responded with raising his hands and chuckling. I meant no disrespect, dear. I was just curious to see what you were holding. The soft-spoken nature of the man caused Karina to flush her cheeks at thinking the man had evil intentions. Turning back to him, she uncovered the head of the creature, causing him to step back. Well, uh, uh you, uh, <laughs> that is some pet you have there, my dear. Do you intend on keeping it? Karina looked at the group, who looked on with blank faces and bitter lip. I'm not sure came her meek reply. A broad grin crossed the man's face as he moved back to the wagon and obtained the bridle. Bowing his head, he presented the item to her. You may need this, then. Elated, then saddened, Karina pushed the bridle away, repeating that she had no money to pay for it. Ah, yes, so you did say so. My apologies. He returned to the top of the wagon and winked at her. I'll just throw this back in my wagon, he said and flipped the leather straps high into the air, but woefully missing his wagon. She watched it fall to the ground and looked back at the man, who gave her a big wink, and then coaxed the oxen forward. Good luck, adventurers, he said as the wagon rumbled south, and Karina picked up the bridle. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast, and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at the Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures of Philbar, thanks for listening.